is Monday and it is time for some Pilates. If you do not know me or you haven't uh, been taking any of the classes, uh, my name is Christina Melianta McPherson. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me this morning. So we're gonna go back through some of the basics and we're also gonna add on. I try to always ensure that you have something that you can use to back up to if something is feeling too hard. Um, a couple of really big goals that you want to remember when doing Pilates is it should never hurt. We are working to work for sure, um, but pain or strain or anything that's gonna last that's not just muscle soreness, we want to avoid that. So since I do not have my eyes directly on you, I'm going to ask you to make sure that you take the route that feels the best for you overall. Um, nobody's watching you at home, nobody's judging you. I think that that helps me at least when I'm doing a workout on my own at home. All right, so we're gonna start out with your strap today. A Little bit of warm up. I always do a warm up before we get into the main body of exercises. If you're uh, holding a static strap, that's fine. A towel will also work. If you don't have one super handy, just do it without, that's okay. It's gonna give you a little bit more to use something that will hold your arms equal with each other, uh, but no big deal either way. So I'm gonna hold my arms a little bit wider than shoulder width, straightening my elbows all the way and pulling apart on my strap or band. You don't actually want a lot to pull on, you just want that resistance there. Okay, keep the bottom ribs into the ground and slowly move the arms back. You'll notice that my armpits are turned to face the ceiling the entire time and my ribs stay down. So they haven't gone forward towards the ceiling like that. I'm gonna keep my ribs nice and heavy and only bring my arms as far back as I can keep those things. Keep the strap active. It's gonna help you protect your shoulder joints and slowly move the arms until they're straight up again. Let's do that again. Inhale as your arms go back, keeping the ribs down and a little bit of tension pulled apart on that strap. Exhale as you bring the arms forward. Inhale as you go back. You should feel how your neck and shoulders are really pretty loose. There's no tension through the neck. All of this work is in my arms and my core. Okay, you can start to bring the arms forward a little bit as you go. We'll do that two more times. It's called an arm raise. So it gives us this nice lift. That's about as far as I can go with my shoulders staying stable my chest wide and my ribs down. Inhale, keep that band nice and active as it goes overhead. It'll tell you when you start to cheat. Exhale as you come forward. One more time, folks. Inhale as you go overhead. Exhale as you come forward. This time we're gonna keep reaching the strap forward just past the knees. Curl the head up and come up to the bottom of your ribs. Make sure that the hips stay down. You may need to walk your feet a little forward. Keep the band active. Roll all the way down. The ribs remain down as the arms go back. I'm keeping tension in that strap the whole time. Big exhale. We always exhale in Pilates at the point of movement where we need the most assistance from the core. Inhale as you roll back. So be sure your navel is drawing towards your spine here. Exhale as you come forward. Your arms should definitely be feeling a little work along with the core. And inhale as you roll down. We're gonna do two more. So we've been talking about the spine like it's laid out on a tape measure. The top of the spine where the head rests is like number one on the tape measure. The base of the spine where the tailbone is is like number 10 on the tape measure. So as I roll up, I'm rolling up through one, two, three, maybe four, four would be difficult, and coming back down, keeping my navel to my spine the whole time. One more, exhale. And inhale. All right, we're adding on. Your arms should be feeling a little tired by now. As you exhale and curl, bring one knee up under your strap or towards your chest. Slowly lower it back down. We're adding in what's called a knee fold. Exhale, keep the pelvis from rocking side to side. And inhale as you lower. Try to squeeze the core towards the back of the body. Use your exhale to help. It's a lot to think about. Like I said, we start easy, we work harder. So you can always stick with one of the previous versions 
or just do the knee folds on their own. Exhale, inhale. Let's do one more time. Exhale, and inhale down. All right, get rid of the arms for a second. They should be kind of tired after that for sure. Let your head swivel side to side. Notice if your neck feels really tense at all and try to just get rid of that tension. All right, so we're gonna hug the core towards the spine, nice and deep as you're here. Okay, take one leg and slide it out. Notice if you can reach it a little bit longer, create a nice length through the waist and reach the arm up away from that. We're trying to draw the core muscles into the back so they lightly touch the floor here. My shoulder is shrugging up to my ear on my, arms, uh, my arm length inside. And that's gonna help to stretch out my back. Give yourself two more breaths here. Really reach the leg and arm apart from each other. And then we'll change sides. So the other leg goes long. Arm overhead, really stretch it out. See how much space you can make in that second side of your body here. My shoulder shrugs up, my hip is a little long, but I'm trying to keep my first side just as long as my second side. Big deep breath, one more time. So Pilates is really all about making as much space as you can through the body. It helps you engage everything in a little bit more. All right, so that concludes our warm up for today. From here, we're going to uh, come into the main part of our exercises. If you would like, only if you would like, you can hold your strap underneath your legs today in your hands. Okay, if that gets confusing or it's too much or this is new, just ditch the strap. The arms are going to be doing the same thing whether they're holding the strap or not. Bring your knees one at a time up towards the chest and place the knees in tabletop so they're just over top of the hip joints. I'm going to pull the strap or the towel apart just a little bit to feel my shoulders engage, okay, if you have one, and then curl up one, two, three, four, and hold. So we're gonna keep this, your upper ab curl, as we do the exercise today. This is your hundreds, we're taking 10 breaths here. Move the arms up and down, inhale, and exhale. If you're wondering why it's called the hundreds, inhale, it's because we're inhaling for five counts, exhale, exhaling for five counts, we do that 10 times, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five. If you want to make it more challenging, extend your legs up. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, look towards your navel and exhale. Keep your navel to your spine. Inhale, if you have a strap, make sure it's in tension. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Two more breaths. Be sure your navel is to your spine as you breathe in. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Last breath here. Exhale, two, three, four, bend the knees and lower the head down. I'm gonna turn the head a little bit side to side. So that's one specifically that a lot of people feel tension, roll to your side. Uh, a lot of people feel tension or strain in their neck when they start doing Pilates. I just wanna let you know it does get better, but it's not worth putting a lot of tension or strain there as you get a little bit stronger. The more you bend through your middle back, the better that will become. You won't be using your neck as much. However, like I said, it does take a little bit of building up too. So if you've been doing Pilates with me for the last few weeks, first off, thank you. Second off, check in and see. You may be able to go for an extra count or you may, uh, you may be starting to get a little tired, so then you rest, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna put my strap across my lap because we're using it in a second. My feet come down to the mat about halfway, halfway bent, and then my feet can either be toes up or toes down. It's really whatever feels most comfortable for you. I'm gonna sit behind my bum, 
so that my hips are curved under like the hook of a J. And then I'm going to bow forward with my chest and ribs like we did in our hundreds. From the side, you can see that makes my spine kind of look like a capital C. We call this a C curve. Your hands can lightly touch the backs of your legs. We're going to keep the feet grounded and slowly start to roll back. So if this is the bottom of my tape measure, I'm rolling my 10 backwards, my 9 backwards, my 8 backwards, just until my arms are straight or until my feet try to pick up. Don't let your feet lift. Exhale, curl forward, 8, 9, and 10. We're going to do that again. Stay behind your bum the whole time. Roll it back. Use your core. Inhale as you go back. 10, 9, even weight on both hips. 8. Exhale, curl forward. 8. Don't let your 10 move yet. 9, and 10. Now if that's feeling easy, float your arms. Same exercise. Roll back. Inhale. Keep the chest wide. 2, 3. Exhale. Curl. Curl. Curl two more times. Make sure that you're working someplace that you can feel your core doing the work rather than your back. Exhale, eight, nine, ten. One more time. Keep the neck nice and open. Roll it back. And exhale, curl it forward. All right, we're going to take that strap now. If you don't have a strap, keep doing the version you were just doing. That's totally fine. If you're coming all the way down with me, though, I do want you using a strap just for safety at home. I'm going to straighten my legs out in front of me. My feet are together and flexed. My elbows pull back by my side with the tail of my strap in each hand. I'm going to create that C shape again from the side. Okay, I'm rolling all the way down. Technically, this is our transition, though, guys. Ten, nine, eight. Top of the pelvis, seven, six, five, four, into my shoulder blades, three, two, and one. All right, so we start our full roll-ups from here. I'm going to curl the head up, curling up through our tape measure number one, two, three. Feel the rest of your spine on the floor, four, five. Keep engaging the core, six, seven, eight. I'm at my hips now, nine and ten. Roll it back, curling the tail under for ten. Keep those feet on the ground, nine, eight. If your feet are lifting even with the strap, then you want to go back to the bent leg version. That's totally fine. You'll build strength over time, I promise. I used to have a horrible time with this exercise, and it took me a few years. Now it's much better. I'm going to roll it up. Inhale, exhale. You can keep counting the tape measure in your mind if you would like. Roll it back. Inhale. Exhale. Check in on the core. Make sure it's pulling in the whole time. Let's add a little more flow. It might not be as perfect. At the end of the exhale, you're staying up. Roll it back. Inhale. At the end of the exhale, you're all the way down. Two more times, guys. Inhale, curl. Exhale, don't forget to engage that core. Roll it back, inhale, exhale. At the top of the movement, you're looking for a stretch through the back or the legs. And roll it down, inhale, and exhale. Good job. So we're staying down, that's the end of our repetition. We're gonna take a leg out of the strap at a time and just set that strap to the side. If you would like, you're welcome to always come to a little twist. It's a nice way to stretch out the back. We're going to take the right leg to the chest, lace the fingers behind the leg, and straighten the left leg on the floor, keeping both hips nice and square. So don't let your right leg hike up towards your hip, okay? I'm going to hug the knee to the chest. You can stir it around a little bit, trying to keep the rest of the body nice and still. It's a really good opportunity to check back in with the core as well. Okay, and then keep the knee physically touching the chest as best you can. Point the toes and slowly lift the foot up. You're going to notice my leg is nowhere near straight. That's okay. Flex the heel hard and lower back down. So these are the start of our tree stretches. Tree stretches are a nice little opening for the sciatic nerve pathway. 
So if you get something out of these, guess what? It's not your muscles, it's your nerve. And your nerve being tight is a huge reason why people think the backs of their legs are far tighter than they really are. One more time, point to lift, flex to lower. All right, we're gonna point and lift to stay. This time, let the leg go away from the body as much as it needs to, to go comfortably straight or straight-ish. I'm gonna curl my head and shoulders up, look at my hips, make sure that they're square, and then from here, my hands go a little higher to my calf. Keeping the legs straight, I'm pulling it slightly towards me to stretch the hamstrings, push it away from you to release some of that stretch. Again, towards and away. Exhale and inhale. Two more times here. One more time. Good job. Bend that knee, grab your strap. If you don't have a strap, keep the knee about halfway bent. Putting that strap over my foot, a tail in each hand and elbows down by the sides so that my chest can stay open. Now at the straight up position, my hips actually aren't fully square. So I'm gonna lower my leg a bit. I'm gonna make a capital D shaped circle, half circle with this leg. My hip stays down and crossing it to the left. Really work to pull that right hip into the mat. Bring the leg down around, there's the swoop of the D into its own lane and back up. That's the straight edge of that capital D. Let's cross it over again. Inhale and exhale. Push the leg longer to keep the core engaged. Inhale, cross, exhale, lift. So we're really only just moving the leg around in the hip joint. Everything else in the body is nice and stable. One more, inhale, exhale. Pause at the top, let's reverse. Go down the straight edge of that half circle, Cross over, push the leg longer as it lifts. If you start to feel like it's shortening, it just means that you're going too high. You wanna keep it within your working range of motion where you can stay long and light and get the best stretch possible. One more time, inhale down, exhale cross. All right, that was your last one. Bend that knee, take the strap, set it to the side. The opposite hand's gonna hold that leg now we can twist all the way across. Let your hip lift, keep both shoulders on the floor. Everybody has a different range of motion for that, that's okay. It's more important that you keep the shoulders down as the waist twists. Sometimes I like to encourage this hip to push a little farther away from my shoulder, which is exactly what we were doing for those leg circles too. Take another deep breath through the waist, try to make it as long as possible and then come back to the mat. All right, we're changing, starting with the tree stretches. For your left leg, re-square your hips on the mat. Hug your left leg towards your chest, straighten your right leg, and draw little circles around. Try to keep the rest of your body still because now you know that's where we're headed for the workout. All right, knee as close to the chest as possible. Check out those hips are square. Point the toes and send the foot towards the ceiling. Flex the heel hard and lower it back down. Point to lift, flex to lower. We're still keeping the core engaged here. The navel is drawn towards the spine, no matter what that leg is doing. Two more times. Again, if you get a stretch here, sometimes I get it more in my calf. It's actually your sciatic nerve pathway. So the muscles that can kind of clench around that sciatic nerve area. Last time, good job. All right, we're gonna point the toes, let the legs straighten wherever that is, curl the head and shoulders up. And again, square off your hips if they're unsquared. Pull the navel to the spine and take the hands to the calf. We're gonna bring that leg a little closer and a little farther away. I'm keeping a pretty consistent push-pull through my hands as I'm here. My hands take over to bring the leg towards me. My leg takes over to push it away. Do two more times like that. One more time. And that's the end of our tree stretch. So we're gonna grab the strap, put it over the foot, one tail in each hand. Elbows down so the chest is wide. Okay, push that leg a little bit lower. Try not to leave it at 90 degrees. You want it long, right? so that your core pulls back the other way, just like those opening stretches we did. 
We're going to take the leg across for the swoop of that capital D or half circle. Bring it down and around, back to its own lane. Push it longer to lift it up. You'll feel your core engage that way. Inhale, cross over. And exhale as you lift. Remember, if you're not using a band, just keep the knee partially bent. Keep it the same amount of bent throughout your half circle. Two more times. Inhale, cross. Exhale, lift. One more time, cross. And exhale, lift. Pause at the top. We'll reverse. Push the leg long and down. Scoop the core in and up. Cross over and lift. Inhale, reach that leg long. Exhale to cross. Three more times. Push the leg longer as it starts to lift. It's going to help you maintain contact with your left hip on the floor. One more time. And cross. All right, we're taking that strap to the side. Opposite hand pulls the knee across. Both shoulders stay down on the floor. You can use that top hand quickly to push the hip farther away from your shoulder. That should give you a little more stretch, also better alignment. As you breathe, try to send your breath out your back. Two more here. All right, we're coming back to center. So you can either roll fully onto your side to come up to sitting, or if you don't have any back problems and you promise not to fling your body, you're gonna hold the back of that thigh, push the leg forward and down, and roll up through your tape measure. The Pilates is really big on not throwing the body around. First off, it's not healthy. You can actually give yourself whiplash. Second off, why would you do something that's gonna make you less strong when you have the opportunity to make yourself more strong? All right, so rolling like a ball. My feet are together. Feet together, not the soles, just the sides. My knees go a little bit apart. And you do wanna be sure if you do the full exercise that you are on a very padded surface. So thick yoga mat over a carpet. My hands are going behind my legs. My elbows are wide and I'm creating that C curve. So my 10, and my one are curling together. Round your 10 under until you can pick up your feet and find your balance. Now this is okay to stay like this for the entire time, especially if you're like me and you tend to have a slightly flatter lower back. If you would like to go farther, you're gonna tuck the 10 under, the tail, go back and come up, trying to keep your shape, leaving your head off the mat. Go back again, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. So I'm pushing my legs into my hands the whole time. I'm using that to get a little booty lift as I go back. If this is feeling easy and you would like to make it harder, take your hands to your shins just below your knees. Inhale and exhale. So it makes your shape a little bit tighter together, which makes the exercise more difficult. Let's do two more times, folks. Inhale, exhale. Remember, smaller is harder. You want to go for that harder version. Exhale. All right, put the feet down, rest for a moment. We are going to review what the ab series looks like so you don't have to turn your head in a funny way to watch the camera. And then I promise we will do it all together. If you want to be super fancy, you can add a transition from this rolling like a ball back into your hundreds. Again, don't do it quite yet, just watch with me. You're gonna take your hands laced or overlapped onto one leg. If you know the fancy hands, it's same side hand to the ankle. Don't worry too much about that today though. I'm gonna roll myself back, leaving my head up, straightening my free leg. So it's halfway up to the ceiling. Don't put it all the way down here, okay? I'm bending a leg towards me. This is your single leg stretch. After five sets, we're gonna go to double leg stretch. Knees start in tabletop. Arms and legs go up. Arms open to the sides, not behind me. And they hug the legs in. This is our double leg. You'll notice the first two, single and double, have bent portions. We're going to go to single straight leg called scissors. I'm pulsing that leg in if I want to get a little extra fancy. And I'm going to go to a double straight leg. So we have this pattern. Hands go behind the head, elbows nice and narrow so they pick you up. The legs go down about three inches and up. So I'm not going very far. My back is staying totally stable on the floor. Okay, the last one in the sequence is elbow to knee. Both elbows reach to the outside of this leg. 
My bottom elbow is not going back behind me. It's going forward. I'm staying high as I come through center. So I'm not dropping back each time. All right, so those are our exercises. We're gonna do the first two in a row and then we're gonna do the last three in a row because we've been building up to that. I know it's tough. Remember, you can take breaks if you need to. You can always come back and watch the video again or pause it if you would like. So our fancy transition, both hands to the right leg. You can overlap them or same side hand to the ankle. Roll back, keep your head and shoulders up. Straighten your free leg at least halfway off the floor. Inhale here, change to the left leg, exhale. Inhale right, exhale left. Head and shoulders stay up, right. Exhale left. Really straighten that straight leg out there. Inhale right, exhale left, bend both knees. Arms and legs go up to the ceiling, double leg stretch, reach to touch the ceiling. Circle the arms around, hug them in. Inhale up, exhale open. Don't let those arms go behind you. They go straight up, out to the sides and around. Two more times. We get a break after this one. One more time and hug it in. Lower the head and shoulders down. Turn the head a bit side to side. All right, we are doing the last three in a row. So again, make your movement smaller if you have to. Take your time, pause the video, come back to it. No worries. Name of the game is to stay safe. So I'm gonna go scissors, curling the head and shoulders up, both hands to my right leg, left leg goes about halfway down. Inhale here, change, exhale. Think of just bringing the leg up to the hands rather than really pulling with the hands. Inhale right, exhale left. I can add a pulse just through the top leg. Left, inhale right, exhale left. Hands to the head, elbows narrow. Legs go down just an inch or two, lift them up. Try to pull the core back to lift them up. Three, elbows high, don't let those elbows lean back. Four, five, and pause. Bend your right knee, rotate outside that right knee, inhale. Change, exhale, inhale, exhale. Don't lean back as you come through center, exhale. Almost there guys, two more each side. Last time right, left, and lower down. All right, we're gonna cross the right ankle over the left knee and pigeon. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing Pilates, you should still feel that ab series pretty strongly. I know I do. And I've been doing Pilates since, well, far too long, let's put it that way. Change legs. You don't have to rock with this. You could gather the legs in or leave them down. Just whatever feels good. Again, if you're feeling a lot of tension through the neck, make sure that you twist your head. And again, you can roll to your side to come up to sitting. That's always the Pilates approved way or push the leg into the hands and roll up nice and slow. We're coming to spine stretch forward. The legs go just outside the width of the mat and you're sitting up on top of the sit bones. So if it feels difficult to sit up tall here, you want to, um, to put something under your pelvis so that you don't feel like you're tucked and slouching or tight in the front of your hips. You can even sit in a chair or on the front edge of a couch. That is totally fine as long as you can be tall. The arms go out in front of your shoulder height. Traditionally, we have the palms down here, but if your shoulders just shrugged up, you're gonna take your palms, turn them to the ceiling to help get those out of the way. Tall inhale here, lift the navel up the front of the spine like an elevator. Exhale, nod the head, curl it down into your lap. Inhale, roll back up. So I'm still articulating through the spine. As I exhale, I'm coming down through my one, two, three, four, maybe my five, right through here. And then rolling up five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, curl. Inhale, lift. After those feet are still flat. Exhale, curl. Inhale, lift. Try 
try to get a little taller each time. Exhale, curl. Inhale, lift. Exhale, curl. And inhale, lift. All right. We're going to bend the knees, scooch the hips a little bit forward on the mat. That does two things. It makes sure that you have enough space behind you so that your head and back are covered by your mat. It also helps us tuck the pelvis under. So my 10 is curled a little bit forward. I'm going to take my hands to the backs of my legs. Again, the sides of the feet are together like rolling like a ball. The knees are a little bit apart. I'm going to round my 10 under to pick up my feet. Elbows remain wide. We're going to start with the balance portion. Take your right leg, lift it up in line with your right shoulder or ear. Bend it, lower it down. Now, that's probably going to play with your center of gravity if you're not used to this. That's okay. Bring it back down. Be sure the feet are aiming slightly out to the sides of your mat. And back down. The navel stays drawn in the whole time. Inhale and exhale. It's also okay if your leg doesn't get fully straight. It depends on your flexibility as well as your balance. Let's go one more with that left side. Now both legs are going to lift up. Inhale, exhale. Chances are that's a lot harder. Inhale, exhale. Make sure you're sitting on both hips evenly. Draw the navel towards the spine and exhale. All right, you can keep doing these, or if you'd like to, you can add on with me. Be prepared though, these are hard. You might not make it today, that's okay. We're gonna bring both legs up and pause. Even if they're a little bit bent, as long as your feet stay at least knee height, at least tabletop, that's okay. We're gonna rock back, just on the lower back, not the head. Come up, find your balance. Now, here's the big thing in Pilates, your glutes are breaks. So squeeze your glutes at the top, to find your balance. We're gonna rock back again. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So the exhale helps your core engage. <laughs> your brakes stop you. I don't make it every time either. Inhale, exhale. Two more. And one more. All right. Our fancy transition here is going to be to bring the legs together. Bend the knees and then roll your spine backwards. All right, the knees are going to stay about halfway bent. Arms come down by your sides. You're going to imagine these knees drawing a circle about the size of a basketball while you're here. You're going to take the knees slightly to the right. You'll feel your weight shift into the right hip. That's okay. Bring the knees down slightly, just an inch or two. Around to the left and back up to center using your core. So we've just circled around the back of the pelvis. Go to the left. We're reversing. Down and around. Exhale. Think of the waist staying nice and strong. Inhale right. Exhale left, then center. Inhale left. Exhale, right and center. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more each way. This is called corkscrew. It's one of my favorites. I love any time I get to use my obliques. And exhale, bend your knees to your chest. Hold one leg or roll to your side to come up to sitting. Okay, we're coming into an exercise called saw. So the feet go wide again, just outside your mat. Toes flex up to the ceiling. Core engaged nice and tall. If you need to, sit on top of something, that's totally fine. I'm going to take the arms out to the sides. Lift up tall and twist to your right. Okay, my arms are still a little in front of my body. I'm going to reach across to the outside of my right foot. My back pinky finger turns up. Lift up tall. We're going to the other way. Exhale. Inhale tall. Twist and exhale. So I'm looking under my back shoulder, pulling my head down towards my lap, keeping my hips equal. Inhale up. Exhale. 
Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale up tall. Exhale, lower the arms down. We're going to flip around and do a little bit of saw, uh, swan work. So swan is the Pilates name for cobra. It's a little bit different if you're used to yoga. Okay, you can stay here propped up on your elbows for a moment. Just let your core stretch out. It should feel kind of good. And then we're taking the hands by the chest. Elbows tucked in nice and tight. You have two options with the legs. You can keep them a little bit apart or you can bring them all the way together. If you have anything with your lower back, please keep them slightly apart. I'm going to take the head and chest, roll the shoulders back, float the face up. Imagine that your hands are dragging back on the mat. They won't physically move, but they should give you a little bit of work. My eyes are gazing at the front of my mat, and I'm lowering forward and down. So all those upper ab curls we've been doing, looking at the navel, is kind of like the opposite of them. I'm going to do that again. Pull the chest forward, inhale, kind of like a turtle coming out of its shell. Exhale, lower forward and down. Now you want the navel to still stay skimming along the spine here. So make sure you don't do a belly stand where you push your belly down to lift your chest up. And exhale. Now you can keep doing just those, or you can add on with me if you would like. I'm going to lift the ch chest and face. As my face lowers, my feet are going to lift. Only one thing up at a time. Reverse, feet down, face up, face down, feet up. I'm squeezing my bum and my hamstrings to lift my legs. You shouldn't feel that in your lower back. If you feel that in your lower back, leave it out for now. Two more. Up. One more. Keep the core strong. And very nice. Push back into a child's pose stretch. Generally, Pilates child's pose, knees are together, feet are together. You can flex your feet if they start to cramp, that's fine. But try to keep the knees close together if you can to stretch the back the best. If bending your knees back like this is not ideal for you, just flip onto your back, hug your knees to your chest. No big deal. I like swinging my hips side to side because it gives me a better stretch in my lower back and my hips. All right, we're going to come out onto the elbows for something called single leg kick today. I'm going to prop up on my arms like a kid watching cartoons, dig my fist down into the ground, and pull my chest forward. Be sure that your elbows are right underneath your shoulders for this one. Okay, the legs are together. Again, if you can, if they need to be apart because this feels better in your lower back, that's okay. I'm going to bend your right leg towards you. Keep both hips flat on the ground, core engaged, and chest forward. So I'm going to kick it a little closer by squeezing the back of my leg. Boop and then lower it down. Other side, bend the knee, keep the hips equally flat, give it a little bonus squeeze, and lower it back down. Okay, so that bonus squeeze is what we call a pulse in Pilates. It's an end range of motion that's training the body to go a little farther. If not today, then someday soon. Right and left, don't let that core go. Right and left. Good job. All right, turn your face so that your temple is resting down and you can see me if that's possible and comfortable. I'm going to bring my arms down by my sides, palms to the ceiling. This one's a little more complicated. Do the best you can with it for today. It's called double leg kick. So I'm going to keep my navel to my spine and my glutes right at my underbum engaged. I'm going to bend both of my knees, keeping the hips flat to the mat. That's important. I'm going to squeeze, squeeze again, squeeze last time, and then bring my feet down. The chest lifts up, the head turns forward, the shoulders pull back. And when I lower down, my head's going to turn the other way, and we'll repeat that again. Feet kick into the bum. Three, two, one, lift the chest, feet go down. Turn the face. Kick the feet in, hips flat, glutes and core engaged. So you can see my hips aren't bouncing when I kick. That's really important. Kick, 
two, three. Inhale up, exhale down, kick. Two, press the hips into the mat. Inhale up, exhale down one more time. Kick, two, three, up, and down. All right, push back into another child's pose. You'll notice we didn't do child's pose between the single leg and the double leg. At the advanced levels, you're doing the swan, single leg and double leg kicks all together. The more you can stack them together, the more that kind of pressure of the kicks will build bone density through the lower back and the pelvis. It's not because we're kicking into the lower back, we're just causing positive stress on the bone, which can help with bone density there. Fun fact, I've actually had a number of clients over the years who have had a dangerous level of bone density, not osteoporosis yet, but they've had a dangerous level. After a year of Pilates, they go back for their DEXA scans and they're back in a good range. It's kind of cool. All right, so we're gonna flip onto the back, feet underneath the knees. This should feel really good after all the back bending we've just done. Let's do a little check today. So we're gonna do our slant board bridge. The wrist stays straight, the fingertips come to touch the front of the thighs. My legs are about hip width apart. It's about two fist distances, ladies. It's not as wide as you think it is. I'm gonna press into the soles of my feet and start to curl my 10 up towards the ceiling. Okay, so my tail is tucking up. My nine comes up, my eight, I'm at the top of the pelvis. My seven and six. My five is gonna stay down, five to four, right here at my ribs. I am, however, trying to push my hip bones up into my arms keeping my ribs behind my arms. I'm gonna start rolling down, hips stay as well as they can, roll the ribs. I'm still pushing my hips up even they're, though they're moving. And all the way down. All right, two more times like that. Inhale, curl your 10, your tail. Exhale as you roll the rest of the way up. That exhale should help you plant your ribs as you push the hips high. Roll back down, inhale, exhale. You should feel a generous bit of work through the backs of the legs as well as the core. Inhale, curl, exhale, press the hip bones up. Notice if they're pressing up evenly. This is one of the things I like about this bridge is I can feel one hip doesn't push as high as the other naturally. It gives me that little extra feedback All right, take the hands, grab the edges of your mat if you have one, push the mat forward. We're gonna add on this time. I'm gonna roll the tail up. Imagine you have a second set of hands in the front of your body, so you're keeping that slant nice and strong. Let's take your right knee, knee folded in. You can stay like this, that's totally fine. If you want more, straighten the leg. If you want still more, lower the leg an inch, lift it up, keep the hips square, it's so really my left leg pushing into the floor that's controlling this. Bend the knee, put the foot down, take an inhale, square your hips off again, they've probably changed. And then exhale, roll it down. We're gonna do the other leg, now you know what's coming. So it's really my right leg that's gonna control this. I'm gonna roll my hips up, keep my ribs squeezing into the back of my body. Stand strongly into the right foot. Lift the left leg, you can stop here. Straighten it, you can stop here, keep the left hip high. You can add on, down and up, just a little bit. Two, everything else stays stable, three. Bend the knee, inhale, put it down, exhale. And roll your spine slowly down, inhale and exhale. I told you we're gonna make it a little bit harder each week, but you should have stepping stones if you need to back up. All right. Let's go to your side kick. So I'm gonna roll up to sitting. I'm gonna turn, let's do your right leg first. So the left edge of your body is down on the mat. My elbow goes in the back corner of my mat. If that's irritating for your shoulder, rest your head, that is totally fine. I'm gonna scooch my bum back, take my top hand back and feel that my hips are right at the back edge of my mat too. So this mat isn't just for spinal protection, it's also to help us align you well. 
Okay, my toes come forward just off the front edge. I'm going to make a fist with my top hand and place that fist so it's blocking right in front of my hips. My bottom armpit is pushing down, if you can think that far ahead, and then my top leg is going to lift up just a little bit. So you should feel both hip bones pressing into that forearm evenly. I'm going to take my top leg, bring it forward only as far as I can keep my hips even. Bring it back behind. Nice exhale here. Keep it straight and strong. Flex it to bring it forward. There's only so far you'll go before your body tries to tip. Point it to take it back. So the range of motion is dependent on your strength and also the tempo we're taking here. Exhale to the back. Okay, I'm trying to keep my torso square, like a two-dimensional box drawn on a piece of paper. As long as you can do that, you are successful. And back. All right, I'm going to take my top leg, turn the knee and toes out so they're up to the ceiling, turn the knee and toes in so they're down at the floor. Do that again, out and in. It's hovering a little bit in front of my bottom leg, which is hard to see from the video angle. Two more, turn it in, turn it out and stay. Good, we're gonna keep the toes pointed, my foot slightly forward, I'm gonna lift it up. Flex the heel, lower it down. It's gonna come down right in front of my bottom leg. Point and lift, flex and lower. Now really important, this top hip stays forward as you lift the leg. You don't want it to sit back. We're gonna reverse that foot, flex to lift it, point to lower it, flex to lift it, point to lower it, one more, flex, and point. Now we're going to add on, lift it up, keep it pointed, thigh stays still, bend the knee, tap the toes down to your opposite knee, and kick it up, two, keep rotating the top knee to the ceiling, you should start to get a nice burn in the back of the leg. Four, it will be harder when you get straight to keep it turned. Five, make sure those hips stay square, straight, and lower down. We're gonna draw little circles, the knee stays up to the ceiling. Eight, seven, nice inhale, keep your core long and strong. Exhale, three, two, and reverse. You guys like the side legs, huh? Three, four, exhale, six. Oh, I feel them too though. Eight, all right, two ways. You can either bend the leg, drape it. We just need it out of the way. If you have the flexibility, try to put the sole of your foot on the mat. The hand can hold in front or behind. The knee is up to the ceiling. My bottom leg lifts as I inhale and exhale to low. Lift it up. Now, if your leg doesn't go this high, that is totally fine. Lift and stay, bottom leg circles. Three, two, these are nice and big and slow. One, take an inhale, pause at the top. Exhale, reverse. Three, two, it's a long exhale. One, both legs come down. Now, if you're still propped up on that bottom hand, go ahead and flatten it. Top hand makes a seat belt in front of your hips. This time, though, you're allowed to lean your hips backwards so that you're off the bottom hip bone and on the cheek. Squeeze both legs together, lift them up. It's my bottom leg and my top waist that's working here. Lower down. Lift them up, lower down, lift up, stay there, bottom leg moves, top leg still, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, so we're using that bottom inner thigh again, 3, 2, and 1, good job, lower down, you're going to flip onto your front side, make a pillow out of your overlapped hands, chest relaxed and wide, forehead down, Heels together. I'm going to keep my face up for a minute so you can hear me. Lift your thighs, keep the legs nice and straight, and open and close the legs in a clap. All right, that's what we're going to do. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, make sure those knees are straight. Exhale, lower down. Turn around to your other side. You can turn the face away from the camera if you would like. It's what we would do in a traditional class but I'd rather face you guys, so I'm gonna flip my head to the other end. Elbow in the back corner of the mat, top hand goes behind, oops, I need to scooch my bum back. Okay, the bottom armpit is pressing into the floor here. My feet are equal, equal in length, and slightly forward off the front of the mat. Make a fist out of your top hand, create a little belt 
in front of both hip bones so you can feel the hip bones on the arm. You're gonna take your top leg, lift it just a little bit, and bring it forward as you inhale. Keep your torso box nice and square. Take it behind as you exhale. Don't let your body lean. It's okay if you go smaller. We're more, in, uh, more focused on keeping the core strong so the torso stays stable. Inhale front, exhale back. If you wanna get a little fancier, you can flex the foot as it comes forward and point it as it goes back. One more time, front and back. By the way, these are a lot harder than they seem. I'm gonna take the top leg, turn the knee to the ceiling, turn the knee to the floor. Turn the leg out, turn the leg in. Keep the hips nice and square. My foot is slightly in front of my floor foot. Turn out, turn in, turn out and stay. Make sure you're really turned out from the hip joint. We're gonna point the toes and lift the leg. It's going forward as it goes up. It's just very hard to tell that because of how the camera is. Inhale, point and lift, flex, exhale, lower. Inhale, point and lift. Keep that top hip forward and lower. Now we're going to reverse the foot. Flex up, point down. The higher my leg goes, the more this front hip, top hip, has to stay pushed forward. One more time. Good job. We're going to lift the leg up and stay. Pointed foot. Top leg stays still. Knee bends and straightens. Keep turning the knee backwards behind you without the hip going three, core nice and strong, four, this should really fire up the back of the hip, five, keep it straight, bring it most of the way down, let it hover, draw little circles, knees to the ceiling, ten, sorry, eight, seven, I got excited, six, five, four, three, make sure that leg is reaching nice and long, reverse, eight, seven, keep breathing, six, bottom armpit into the floor, exhale, Three, two, and one. Top leg, either drape it all the way on the floor or set the sole of the foot down, knee to the ceiling, and hold it. I'm gonna lift the bottom leg up as you inhale, lower as you exhale. Up as you inhale, lower as you exhale. This is the last one, we're gonna go up and stay. Three slow circles, three, two, try to get all the way to the top each time, one. Pause, inhale, exhale, reverse, three, two, and one. Inhale all the way up, both legs come down. Flatten that bottom arm, rest your head, top hand still goes like a seatbelt, but you're gonna lean the hips back slightly. So my top hip is leaned back off my elbow. I'm gonna squeeze both legs together, lift them up, and lower them down. So it's my bottom inner thigh and my top side waist that are doing the majority of the work here. Lower down. Lift and stay. Bottom leg only moves. Ten. Nine. Try to keep the top leg super still. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Together. And down. All right. Turn onto your backs. So there's about maybe 15 variations of leg, uh, side legs. You can twist it out a little bit. We add them in or take them away. First off, depending on level. Second off, depending on time, which is fine. Here's the good news. You guys are almost done. Not quite. Don't get too excited on me. You're welcome to cross an ankle over the opposite knee as well. These are good stretches to come back to, especially a little later today if you're starting to feel tight through the hips. Those side legs, man, they're actually pretty, uh, pretty intense. Change legs. One of the reasons they're so hard, though, is because up until that point of the workout, you've had either most of the front of your body or most of the back of your body fully touching the mat. When we go into side kicks, you're on this knife edge of your body. It's extremely difficult to balance. Requires a lot more effort. All right, we haven't done our half teasers in a week or two. So we're gonna do them today. Walk the legs out farther than you think they should go. So they're actually about halfway straight. My knees are aimed 45 degrees, but it doesn't look like it 
from my perspective where I am on the floor. You can always walk them a little extra farther out if you need to. I'm gonna keep my knees equal. That's really important, guys. Don't let your straight leg drop. I'm gonna straighten one leg. So I've hinged at the knee. My arms go up to the ceiling. I'm keeping my ribs and my core tucked in. My pelvis is even, and I'm going to slowly curl up. Now you might get stuck here. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, if you do, just keep squeezing the muscles. You can also try climbing up your legs, but I'm gonna sit behind my bum at the top with my core tucked in. Roll it back slowly, inhale, and exhale. Change legs. Everything equal on the mat, curl up. Now you will notice with these, you have one side that is far stronger. That's totally reasonable. We use exercises like this in Pilates to make both sides equally strong. One more each side. Inhale. Exhale. Keep drawing that navel back. My 10, 10, 9, 8 are still tucked under. Inhale. Exhale. Remember, you're never throwing your body upwards. You're just working where you can. Last time. And roll it back. Inhale and exhale. All right. Take a moment. Take a breather. We have one more exercise today. It is your seal. Most people remember a seal pretty well because it's a little bit silly. Hold one leg. Push the other leg straight. Bent leg helps to tip you up nice and evenly and slow. So that's actually a really good one to practice if those half teasers were difficult for you because they'll help you build strength with a little bit of extra help because you get your hands on your thighs. All right, sides of the feet together. I'm gonna to pick my bum up, scoot it forward. So I'm a little bit rounded in that C-curve already. My hands crochet through my legs and then around my ankles or heels. You'll probably feel that that's pretty tight on your elbows, that's okay. I'm gonna bend my elbows and push them out Squeeze my inner thighs in at the same time. It keeps everything a little bit occupied. It's like a toddler. You want to give it something to do. And then you're going to pick your feet up from your core and find your balance. I'm going to clap my feet really big, just moving at my hip joints three times. Roll back on the low back. Don't let the head touch. Exhale. So I'm not really staying back there and hanging out. As soon as I think that I'm going back, I try to come up. You can try adding one clap as you go back. Clap. You can try adding two claps as you go back. Clap, clap. You can even try adding three. Three is the maximum. It just means we're kind of clapping throughout the movement. It's a little bit harder. It's a little more distracting. Woo. Remember your glutes or brakes. Use that exhale to come up. Two more times. And last one here. Try to find your balance at the top of this one. Nice. If you're able to stick it, good for you. If not, there's always next time. All right, you're going to turn and sit comfortably. If you can, again, elevate your hips if you need to. We're just going to take a simple side bend stretch. Side bends are a part of Pilates. They're considered much more advanced for the spine to do. So you won't see them so much in the mat work for a really long time. I'm going to take my left hand down, my right arm overhead, glue the arm and the ear together. I'm going to lean to my side, not dropping my head down, reaching that arm and ear long as I push my stretching hip towards the floor. We're going again for length here. Why? Because length makes your spine taller, gives you better posture, releases all the muscles you didn't know were tense. You can twist your chest a little bit up and down if you would like. Just toggle some extra space in there. Come on up and we'll change to the other side. My right hand is down, my left arm is up. I'm going to start before I tip too far, gluing my ear and arm together. I'm going to lean from my whole waist, keeping my far hip down. Should feel good. I know you guys have worked hard today. I appreciate your attention and work. You can do a little toggle. 
Remember too, there are tons of videos that you can use for your workouts here. Last little extra reach. And come all the way back up. Nice work, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today in this workout. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have questions, you can tag me in the comments. Uh, Christina Milianta McPherson, and I am happy to help. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next Monday, okay? <laughs>